Welcome and Merry Christmas. I'm Krista and I'm the Connections Director here at SCC. Hi, I'm Pastor Steve and uh, I'm one of the part of the team here. <laughs> he SCC. does a lot. I do. <laughs> Uh, so we want to make sure that you say hi and fill out a connection card. On the connection card, you can let us know if there's anything we can pray for. You can ask for more information and uh, just engage and find out how you can get plugged in. Well, today we're glad you're joining us and I uh, want to just give you an idea of what our gathering looks like as you watch online. We're going to start with some worship, some Bible reading, and uh, we're just going to sing and, and rejoice in the Lord. And then we're going to be in prayer for our Christmas Compassion Project. This is the last Sunday, and we're so thankful. Thank you so much for your donations. We have been able to fill 75 boxes, plus a few leftovers to give away. And we're so excited today, this evening, uh, four in the afternoon, we're going to be giving away those, those boxes to those in need. And I think it's going to be a huge blessing. That's awesome. And the next thing we're going to do is worship through giving, followed by the final message for Advent with Pastor Dwayne on joy. We want to share just uh, before we worship, we want to share a few announcements. And it kind of goes in the area of gather, grow, and go. So coming up, we have a Christmas Eve online gathering. And we encourage you to jump in. You can watch it at 5 p.m. Uh, in a live Facebook format. Uh, invite your friends to join us in that, or you can view it later if you'd like, but it's just gonna be a great way to, to go into the Christmas season, that Christmas Eve night, and make it special. And Pastor Dwayne will be sharing a short word from the Lord, and we have some great readings about the birth of Jesus. And next, we're gonna talk about GROW. Uh, so we're going to start the year with a week of prayer and fasting. That'll be January 2nd through the 9th. And January 9th, we're going to have an encounter night with worship and prayer at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. That would be great. I love those encounter nights. Yeah, such a meaningful time of prayer oh, together. It's, it's so good. Start out the new year on the right foot. And, and then we're going to talk about how you can grow in groups. And we're going to have... Uh, a lot of groups starting up. We're going to have Oasis going through the Gospel of John, meet on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. And then a, a brand new startup this season of Alpha. And we've been sharing a lot about that. Pastor Duane is so excited about this. You can register for the group online, the Church Center app. And it starts at 12.30 uh, after the gathering on Sunday, starting January 9th, and lunch will be provided. We're also going to have a group with uh, Marlon and Diana Newhouse about how we love, and that's Sunday evenings. And then there's, of course, Wednesday group offerings. I'll be starting my Zoom group again. We're not, some of our seniors aren't quite ready to meet in person yet, so the Zoom group is meeting really well and, and meeting the needs. And we're just gonna go into this great study of who God is. God is, and it's gonna be a powerful study. And the young adults are going to be studying I Am, which is finding your identity, claiming your freedom, and embracing the adventure. And that will also be on Wednesdays, but in the evenings. And also on Wednesday night, the women's group, uh, we're gonna have a great study that uh, I think is gonna be a blessing. It's not supposed to be this way, is the name of the study. And then also there's a men's group that we'll also meet on Wednesday night. So, be sure to ask us if you have any questions how you can get plugged in. Then, <laughs> let's talk about Go for a minute. Once again, uh, just the, the Christmas Compassion Project, we're gonna show pictures about that and we're just so excited. And then uh, just saying, how can we enter into this new year uh, just with that heart of missions and the Christmas Eve service once again, 5 p.m. online please be sure to jump into that. And today we're going to start with our call to worship. So we encourage you to just read along at home. We're gonna read through Psalm 511. So read along with me. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. 
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your joy that we need during this season. There's so many people that are hurt and angry and upset. And Lord, we need to just be soaked in your joy. And I, I pray as we have an opportunity to share the compassion boxes and, and just to reflect your beauty, Lord, that they would see your joy in us and we would reflect that through this Christmas season to our family and friends. We pray in your precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you. 
As we turn our hearts and our attention towards prayer today, uh, we want to pray over our homes and our hearts this Christmas as we go through, but we also want to pray for several families uh, who, have, who have recently lost loved ones. If you've been with us in person, you know that we've been praying for, uh, for Joyce and Joyce Rice and, and, and Chris Bender as they've said goodbye to their sister Beth, to their sister Beth. So we, we want to pray for them. We know that with Beth that she is rejoicing today, that she is experiencing everything that we're going to be talking about here in a moment, just the joy of the Lord and no longer being held captive often by our own bodies. But we pray for the family as they mourn. They mourn with hope but we still mourn. We also want to pray for uh, the Pastor Paul Zetterson's family. Pastor Paul uh, Zetterson, wonderful saint, amazing man of God who's done so much both locally as well as internationally for the Lord. He recently at the age of 99 has, has, has passed away. We'll be sure to have more details for you as arrangements are made. Also for uh, Don Peterson's uh, son-in-law, Matt. Uh, young man in life recently passed away during the season and it's it's so hard to hear this and as a community we've we've been grieving as we've just said goodbye to three just wonderful precious family but it's important for us during these times to come together and to pray to pray for the families because all of these families know the Lord and they pray with hope but it's important for us can we just come together now and pray for all these families that during this time they would experience the peace from the Lord, they would experience strength, and that through this that they would even be brought closer together as a family. So Lord, we thank you because uh, we know that that for each of these precious lost, Lord, your, uh, your sons and your daughter, Lord, we know that they are with you now, that absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and that they are rejoicing, they are experiencing joy unimaginable. Things that we see dimly, they now see clearly. But Lord, we do pray for the families because we do mourn. Lord, I pray uh, today for Joyce Rice and for Chris Bender, Lord, as they've said goodbye to their precious sister, uh, Beth, during this time. Lord, I pray that the peace of God would just surround their hearts and would guard their hearts and their minds during this season, that you would be with them as a family as they make preparations and even as they gather together and as they communicate. God, may they experience your hand and your peace. Lord, for Pastor Paul Zetterson's uh, family, Lord, just such a wonderful man of God who has, who has encouraged us and taught us so much about you. Lord, we do pray again for the family. Lord, that the family, as they come together, that you would give them strength, you would help them with all the arrangements as they celebrate his life and as they celebrate his ministry. God, may they experience strength and power from you in the season. And Lord, we pray for Don Peterson and his family as they've said goodbye to his son-in-law. Lord, we pray for Shannon, we pray for Megan, Lord, as, as they mourn. Father, we don't understand when, uh, when life ends at such a young age, but in this season, we choose to trust you knowing that you are with us. That when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because you are with us. So Lord, be with Shannon and her family, Lord, as they say goodbye to a husband and a dad during this time. Lord, may, may they experience your power. May they experience the community, the body of Christ surrounding them to strengthen them, to be there for them at each, at each time, at each season. Lord, be with Don. Lord, help him. Lord, as he, uh, as he ministers to his family, Lord, may he experience strength from you, words from you uh, in all that he does. Lord, we, we, we love these families so very much, and we know that you love them. Your, your love is perfect. So God, may they experience the love of Christ and the peace of Christ, the joy and the hope that comes from knowing you in this season, we pray. And we give you thanks for it in your name. Amen, amen, amen. Continue to pray. A couple of reminders as we continue to go forward. Uh, one, be sure to join us for our special Christmas Eve service, which is on Christmas Eve, uh, uh, December 24th. So please join us. Our team will be there. We'll be sharing in lots of readings and songs, a special devotional, and lots of just wonderful music. So be sure to gather your friends around, your family around, and even start a watch party. We'll have a great time. Me and my family will be joining online with all of you. So we can't wait to see you there. Also, just wanted to make you aware of just some things that have been happening in person. You know, sometimes when we're online, we're not aware of all the things that are happening in person. And we've been having just a wonderful time as a body of Christ gathering. And uh, today we're able to baptize several people today. And as well, we also want to make, make sure that, that, that you're aware of just of just the uh, lives that are being changed. Almost each week we see people that they're walking, they're putting feet to their faith. We've had people give their life to Christ and now we're saying, what do I need to do next? How do I bring my life in alignment 
in alignment with, with, uh, with God as I follow Him. So thank you for your prayers and for those of you watching. If any of you watching, if you've given your life to Christ and you're walking with Him, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to walk with you. Be sure to fill out our online connection card so that we can stay connected. We were made to be together. That's a body of Christ as we connect together and come together. Also today, before we head into the Word, just want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Giving to the Lord is a spiritual act. And the Lord instructs us that the first 10% comes to the local church. If this is your local church, Shalom Community Church, uh, we're so glad that you are a part of what we're doing. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Most people now are giving through our Church Center app. There will be links there for that. And even as we head towards the end of the year, many of you like to give uh, end of year givings. And it's just a reminder that all gifts must be postmarked or received by December 31st to be included in your 2021 giving. So thank you for your faithfulness in that. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness in the Compassion Ministry, our, our Compassion Project with Community Dinners this year. Is we have prepared over 75 Compassion boxes filled with uh, hy uh, hygienic goods, with uh, socks and gloves and so many things. And today, this afternoon, our young adults will be partnering with Community Dinners over in the Bitter Lake area as they disperse all those boxes, gifts of love. Just a reminder that Jesus loves them and He sent us as His sons and daughters to remind them that we are with you in this season. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your giving. Today in person, we had our children's ministry share a special song, a Christmas song with us that was just incredible. We love our kids. And in that, as you, if you've been with us, you know that we've been blessed through these last several months to have Natalie Radford as our children's director. And But Natalie's done so many more things. She's been a part of coffee ministry here. She's been our connections director and she's been engaged in so many ways. And today marks her 10 year anniversary. Of course, she's been a part of Shoreline Community Church for so much longer than that, but we mark uh, staff at five and 10 years. So Natalie, we wanna say, first of all, happy 10 year anniversary. You blessed us so much with all that you do, the people that you love, the people that you encourage, the people that you, you engage with. And today we also announced that Natalie will be stepping down as our children's director. She stepped in on an interim basis and this marks the end of that. But. I would encourage all of you online as you're watching today that just to uh, just to do a shout out here online with just the ways that Natalie has blessed your life and and uh, she's still a part of our family, still a part of of the future of Shoreline Community Church and what what we'll, we'll, we'll be doing. So we're very excited about that. As a team, we're praying about and we're talking to people and looking at who that next children's director will be. So please join with us in prayer as we look at that next team member. So thank you for your faithfulness and we look forward to what the Lord has in store in 2022. Everyone, welcome to week four of Advent on Joy. Can you believe it? I mean, my goodness, this fall went fast, Advent went fast, and we're in week four. But week four is about joy, and, and uh, I love joy because it's joyful. I try to be a very joyful person. And But before we head into that, I just want to give a big thank you out to the Sherlock Community Church family for the Compassion Project that we just did. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, today, this afternoon, our young adults are going to be heading over to Bitter Lake and they're going to be handing out these compassion box. And, and I believe we even had a few pictures that we're going to throw up there for you. We want to make sure that as you're worshiping with us online, that you're engaging with everything else that's going on in the community. So over 75 boxes of uh, just goods that had hy hygienic products in it, socks, um, gloves, so many things that uh, I just want to say thank you that for uh, thank you for stepping up. Our community just stepped up in this and gave towards this. So uh, be praying for our young adults as they they have that blessed uh, joy of sharing and giving that out this afternoon with Bitter Lake as we partner uh, with one of our uh, one of our strategic partners, Community Dinners. So again, thank you for giving. And boy, let's just continue as we head through this season, just a season of generosity. The Lord, He moves. He gives to us in order to give through us. So thank you for engaging in that. So week four, we're in week four. We're talking about joy. And I think when I think about Christmas, I think about joy. One of my favorite scriptures, and I've been quoting it, I think this entire series is found in Luke chapter two, verses eight through 10. And these are the shepherds. 
It says that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy. Word of the day, joy to all people. You know, one of the key words that we have for Christmas is this word joy. And just before we head into it, you know, Christmas is coming up this week, and I'm sure that uh, you're all excited in the hustle and bustle in your homes and your families. But what are some of the things about Christmas that bring you joy? When you think about Christmas, whether this year or as you reflected on your past, or if you're older, maybe you're reflecting on when you were a kid, what are some of the things that bring you joy? You know, uh, we, we often think about the presents under the tree. Uh, we often think about the people and gathering. You know, Christmas in my home was when I'm last of eight kids, and that's when a lot of my brothers and sisters, they would come to our house, they'd come with their family, Nan and Pop would come. And the food and the smells and the hanging out, the, the fireplace roaring. And, and uh, back then, to watch cartoons, you had to get it when it came on TV. There's no DVD, no VHS, as kids across the world now gasp at that thought. But we had to, we had to follow a TV guy to make sure that we saw all of our favorite Christmas cartoons. It was just a fun time. The anticipation was high. And the lights of Christmas, my goodness. I love how we here at Shalom Community Church, just, we just light up the outside as a gift to our community. It's a season of joy. All these things stir our heart. But as we look back to over 2,000 years ago, this message of joy, it was, it was, uh, it was incredible joy. The, the Bible says it was overwhelming joy. Why was this message, this message of Jesus coming, why did it bring so much joy to these people? Well, I think to understand how great their joy was, we need to understand their setting. And their setting is the same as, as our setting, that we are in darkness. We are in darkness. When, when the prophet Isaiah described the people of that day, and I think it's applicable to us today, he often described them as people who were walking in darkness. Now, they were walking. The darkness didn't keep them from moving because we have to move. We have places to go. We have things to do, people to see. But they were walking in darkness. And I don't know about you, but have you ever been in places uh, or been in a situation and you had the lights go out on you and they're screaming around you, kids are scared, people are around. I've had the lights go out on me several times in my life. Uh, here in Seattle, we have windstorms and, and so it's no, uh, it's no new experience for the lights to go out in our house. I've had them go, to, go out in my home. I've, I've actually had my lights go out at times when I've been driving older cars. How many old car drivers out there do you have? Uh, I've even had my lights go out <laughs> while I've been backpacking. And these are scary times because we are dependent on light. We need the light. And when our light goes out, our sight goes out. Our, our eyes, newsflash, our eyes, we need light <laughs> in order to see. Even here in the studio, we have lights on us so that you can see what's happening. That's why one of my essential pieces, I love the backpack, and one of my essential pieces is I always bring a headlamp when I'm backpacking. As a matter of fact, I always bring two because I had one go out on me one time. I bring extra batteries. I check the batteries. I've got backup for the backup going on. Why? Because if you've ever been alone at night in the woods or even with friends and tents around you, it's being, it can be unnerving sometimes. You're, you know, you're, you're not in your home field. You're in someone else's domain when you step into the woods. And we often take our vision for granted, but when you turn it off, you immediately need it. I need it backpacking. I need it in everything that's going on because when I need the light, I need it. Whether I've got to go to the bathroom at night or whether I need to fix something or there's something stirring around the campsite. The light brings us safety. The light, it shows what's going on. The light helps me get to the breaker in my home and flip the breaker when it goes out. And you know, being in the dark can be pretty dangerous. I mean, maybe you've had the dangerous experience that I have of stepping on a Lego in the middle of the night in the dark. I mean, there's, is, there, is there really any pain that's greater than stepping on a Lego? I mean, it's just, we stumble in the doors, we stumble downstairs. And it's one thing to joke and to laugh, and bring joy to our hearts as we think about stumbling around, stepping on Legos in the dark. But here we're looking at a, a, uh, at a deeper darkness, more significant. We're talking about this spiritual darkness. To not have light spiritually is one of the worst darkness that there is. When you have no light spiritually, you have no direction. You have no hope. I mean, Jesus even said in Matthew 10, 28, he said, Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. He said, fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What's Jesus saying? He's like, you know what? Don't worry about your body. This flesh, one day, it's going to die. 
We need to be concerned about our soul. We need to be concerned about our soul. And that's why it's so important that we have this light. You know, so often, so many times, one of the ways that Satan tries to destroy us is by keeping us in the dark. Because he knows that if he can put us in the dark, keep us in the dark, this is where we are most vulnerable. You know, Satan is so committed to, to keeping all of us in the dark that the Bible even says that he even pretends to be an angel of light. He's a fake light. And so many people, they're often so unaware that they are in darkness because they've often been fooled, that they've, they've bought this lie from Satan. There are so many that live their whole lives only to discover that they thought they were in the light, but they never were in the light. See, when you recognize the dark, and I think this is why this, it was such great joy for the shepherds and so many, they recognize the dark, and when you recognize the dark, you easily recognize and you appreciate the light. You appreciate the light when you, when you know what it is to stumble in dark. You know, whoever has a flashlight wins because you know how valuable it is. You know, it's the same thing that, that those who have known hunger have the greatest appreciation for food. They're not complaining about food. They've known hunger and they know the great blessing and the need of food. You know, same thing is true for those who've experienced sickness. Those who've experienced sickness, they have a great appreciation. They value their health. And maybe, maybe you've seen those videos go around. I think one of my favorite videos, you know, uh, Facebook can have so much just junk on it at times, but um, I love a lot of the videos and, and I, I have friends that love posting these, these inspirational videos. And one of my favorite videos, it's about, it's these babies that were born with blurred vision. And often the moms and the dads, they didn't know it was there until it was later diagnosed. And have you ever seen these videos of these babies who were experiencing clear vision for the first time? And if you've watched that, maybe you've seen that. Say in the comments, yeah, yeah, Pastor Wayne, love those videos. If you've ever seen it, you know that when they discover that they have blurred vision and they try to get them glasses that'll fit them, that at first the babies are like, Ugh, they don't want it. They push away, they cry, they're irritated. They often think that you're even, they're like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you irritating me? But as soon as those glasses get on and they begin to see for the first time, you see these babies' faces just light up as they're seeing their mom clearly for the first time. They're seeing their dad clearly for the first time. They're seeing their doctor, the nurse, clearly for the first time. And there's this look of joy that surrounds them. And as I see that, I think, what a great picture of what it means to experience Jesus. To see Him clearly, to see Him fully, to recognize that you were in darkness and maybe you didn't even know it. And then you see Jesus and there's this rush of light into your life. And you're seeing things clearly for the first time. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. See, the light of Christ, when we know what it is to be in darkness, the light of Christ brings great joy to our life. But the, Nehemiah took it even one step further as it relates to joy. Because when I think about joy, I think about the shepherds on a hillside and the angels coming and their lives being filled with great joy. But Nehemiah, in Nehemiah 8.10, he takes it one step further where he says, Now, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And if you've been around church and church gatherings, you've, maybe you've heard that read before. Maybe you've heard it sung before. Uh, we used to sing it with this old song that we sang, The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. We had all these choruses and verses and, and had a lot of fun with that as a kid growing up. You probably heard it before. But what did Nehemiah mean? What did he really mean? When he said the joy of the, of the Lord, what was he talking about? Well, when Nehemiah said this, what Nehemiah was referring to is he was actually referring to God's joy. When Nehemiah said the joy of the Lord, he's saying the joy of the Lord, God's joy is our strength. See, God's joy, the things that make God happy, when our joy is attached to that, there's a strength that comes to that. Now, what is the truth behind this? Well, look at the context of, of this statement. See, these words were spoken uh, in the book of Nehemiah, when we look at this, these words were spoken to the children of Israel after they had returned from exile, this, this, this period where they were separated from God. And now God is renewing them in order to carry out what He had promised to Abraham. But in order to walk in the promises of God, for them as well as for us, it means that we need to be walking with God. In other words, we need to be following His ways, that God's law and and is being uh, played in our life, that we're aligning our lives to the law of God and we're living in a way that is faithful to, faithful to Him. 
But when, but previous to this statement, it says that they were weeping and that they were crying because the law was read for them. And it says that, they, they, that as the law was being read, they were overcome with condemnation. And so the, and the people began to weep. And they were weeping because as they heard the law, they recognized that their lives were out of alignment with God. And it's here that Nehemiah steps in and he says this. Nehemiah says, go and, cele- go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. He says, don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Here's what Nehemiah is doing. In, in this passage, Nehemiah, he's, pu- he's pointing them to the source of our joy, which the source of our joy is God's joy. Here's a truth that we need to hold on to. If you want to have spirits ch- true joy in this Christmas, hold on to this truth. And it's the truth that our joy is found in what makes God happy. And what makes God happy? Reconciliation with Him. Throughout Scripture, we see this clearly, clearly stated that nothing makes God happier uh, more than when those who are lost, those who are in darkness, are reconciled to Him. This, this pleases God's heart. This is, this is the whole purpose of, Christ, of, of Christmas. I mean, look at all the times that even Jesus talked about it. In Luke 15, 7, Jesus says, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner, over one sinner who repents, than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And then to make sure that no one is missing it, Jesus tells three parables about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son to make sure that we do not miss how much joy God has when we are reunited and re- reconciled to Him. I mean, think about it. Nothing makes God happier than when someone who is lost is found, when, when we are reconciled to Him. And Nehemiah is pointing out a key truth. Again, don't miss this today. Our joy, our true joy, our greatest joy, our source of joy is connected to God's joy. Now, why? Why is that? Well, if we focus on our own joy, if we just focus on what makes us happy, we can be easily fooled. Satan is continually tempting us. He's continually pretending to be like, trying to trick us, trying every tactic at and lie to get us to follow him. And this often means that we're willing to do whatever it takes to make this flesh, this body that will one day die, that even, that even if we, as we follow it, it leads to death, to make it happy. God's joy, on the other hand, is connected to what is best for us. He knows us. He loves us. He made us. He created us. He knows what makes us tick. And he is out for our eternal good, that we will be reconciled with him forever. See, God is the only one who never fails us. And as we lean into this, as we are reconciled to God, filled with the presence of God, strengthened and transformed by His power in our lives, we experience this true joy, this deep joy, this joy that nothing in the world can take away from us. See, it's a joy that recognizes that God is out for good, not just for today and not just for tomorrow, but for all eternity. And when my joy is connected to my heavenly Father's joy, the one who made me, the one who loved me, there's a great joy that comes in that will never fade and will never pass away. And as we look at Christmas, we need to be careful that our joy is not connected to a gift under the tree. Those things come and go. I don't have any toys in my growing up. I wish I kept my Star Wars toys, but I don't have any of those. They're all gone. They were here and gone. And I think a lot of times people even, they'll connect their joy to a re- relationships, but relationships are often very fragile. We love people. I love people. I love friends. But the only thing that lasts forever is Jesus Christ, His love for us. This is what God has for us. When our joy is connected and rooted in God, it is eternal, never fails, and it never dies. See, that's why joy connected to God is our strength. It's not just a feeling. It's not just an awareness. It's not just this mental ascent that, yes, we now know who God is. We know He's out for us. But Nehemiah is saying that when, we are, when our joy is connected to God's joy, that now we are strengthened by that. We are empowered by that. And the reason why we're empowered by that is because when we are connected to it, that now we are walking in alignment with God. We're walking in unity with God. And as we've been talking about so many times during this series, proximity to God changes us. And proximity to God brings proximity to His power, to the love of God, to the wisdom of God, to everything that we need. 
That's why joy in the Bible is often referenced in the middle of great trials. When you look at joy, when you look at leaning into joy, when you look at so many people talking about the joy of the Lord, it's often during a time of great trial or great pain in their life. Jesus talked about joy in, 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 uh, in and during, during trouble. James talked about it in James 1. Paul talked about joy in, tri- in trial. And even Jesus said, in, said that he endured the cross for the joy that is set before him. The writer of Hebrews references this. Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. It enables us to withstand and to endure and to walk faithfully with the Lord. See, this type of joy is the strongest joy. But it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a pain-free existence. As a matter of fact, this type of joy is often achieved through pain as we experience the presence of God. Now, why is that? Why is that? The problem of pain, it continues to come up in discipleship. It continues to come up in our own lives, that question of, why do I need to endure pain? Well, that's a long message in its own right, but just very quickly, you know, I think that, um, that often the initial response that we have to most medicines in this world is pain. I mean, have you ever had a cut cleaned out in your life? Have you ever fallen down and had someone that you care about go in and clean it out? I mean, extremely painful. Have you ever had a needle in your life? Have you ever gone through physical therapy in your life? Have you ever had a bone broken that needed to be reset? Have you ever had to say no to donuts? There's, there's lots of sources of pain in our life. And in all of this, sometimes the medicine can seem worse than the sickness. These are some great pains in our life. But I think we would all identify that we need medicine. That a cut that is unclean will destroy us. Just like we need to have broken bones reset. Just, need, just like we need the medicine that comes through often a painful needle. We need these. They're for a betterment. They make us healthy. They make us strong. They enable us to do what the Lord has called us to do. Because without it, disease, and when the Bible talks about disease, it often references sin. Missing the mark, it will take over and destroy our lives. That's why when we lean into the joy of the Lord, we experience that strength. The joy of the Lord, it is our strength. It's strength for today, it's hope for tomorrow, it's healing for our lives and those around us. So let me encourage you as we continue in this season of Christmas, this Advent season, don't be caught up in attaching your joy just just to what makes us feel feel happy or to a, a present under the tree or to relationships. All those things are good things, but they're not the ultimate things. Allow your joy to be connected to the joy of the Lord, what makes Him happy, being reconciled to Him. So as we wrap this up today, just a few questions because it's not just about being informed by the Word of God, it's about living out the Word of God. Discipleship is about applying it and then living it out through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So as you hear this today, ask yourself, in which areas of my life is my joy being challenged? Where is joy being challenged in my life. And then the follow-up to that is asking yourself, is my joy connected to God's joy, which is pleasing Him, or am I focused on just myself, just pleasing this flesh? These are important questions to take in your own personal devotional prayer time, or even to your group of those you care about and go, you know, where is joy being challenged? And really asking yourself, where is my joy attached to? Where is my joy attached to? Is it attached to pleasing the Lord or just pleasing myself? Or is my joy attached to pleasing somebody else? Sometimes our joy is attached to the pleasure of other people or doing what we think others should tell us. True joy is only found in being connected to God, to His joy. And then ask yourself, what is keeping me from experiencing the joy of the Lord? Which often comes to the question, what do I need to surrender? Only empty hands can be filled. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. Allow the Lord to fill you as you empty yourself of all things today. So, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. And, Lord, as we are in this season of Christmas and as we look around for joy, I know that there's so many that are they're struggling with it. So many of us struggle. We've been through a, a difficult couple of years, to say the least. But God, in the middle of us, Lord, I pray that you would help us to to surrender and empty ourselves, to let go of all the things that would entangle us, oh God. 
Lord, to let go of any offense that we've taken up, to let go of any unforgiveness, to, to let go of all those things and to empty ourselves so that we may be filled. You fill empty vessels. So Lord, allow our lives to be poor in spirit so that we may be filled by you as we look to you and as we see you, I pray. Reveal to us the next steps that we need to take in your name, in your name. And everyone said together, amen, amen. Well, as always, we always love the closing in communion. This is one of the things that the Lord commanded us. And we do it every week because uh, we know that people don't always show up every week. And I love doing, doing communion every week. And Jesus said, it's as often as you eat and drink to remember me, to remember me. This is a time when we remember how the love of Christ was enacted for us, that Jesus, while we were still sinners, at just the right time, he gave his life for us. So I encourage you to get some bread and something to drink. And then as you take that today, just break it as a reminder that Jesus' body was broken for you, for me, for all of us. And then simply give thanks to the Lord. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice for us, that you gave yourself for us so that now we can, like the shepherds, be filled with great joy knowing that we are now reconciled to you. Let's give thanks and receive this today. Amen. Amen. Jesus, in the same manner as, as he gathered with his disciples, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood. It represents the new covenant, a new way, a new commitment. Blood is also referenced as, the Bible says that it is by his stripes, by the blood of Jesus, his sacrifice, his atonement, that we are healed. Maybe you're watching today, and as I talk about walking through suffering in the midst of this, that your prayer is, Lord, help me. Help me to see you. Heal me, Jesus. Can we just join together and just pray for those? And again, if you feel comfortable sharing a need, we'd love to hear those needs. We'd love to pray for you. So Lord, I pray for everyone watching today, whatever they're going through, Lord, the physical pain, whether it's, maybe it's mental health, maybe it's relationship, maybe it's a financial need. Lord, you, you told us to bring it to you. So we bring it to you, knowing that you're faithful, that you love us, and we trust you. We trust you, Lord. Lord, you also told us that as we, as we do this, we're to examine our own lives and our hearts and to confess any sin, any areas that we've missed the mark. So Lord, forgive us of our sin. And I encourage you in this to, as the Holy Spirit speaks to you and reveals, He doesn't do that to condemn you. He does that to convict you so that you can be brought back into alignment with God. Experiencing the joy of the Lord is your strength. So Lord, forgive us. We confess it to you. Forgive us of our sin, we pray in your name. Amen. Let's drink together today. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on this last week. Don't forget that we have a very special Christmas Eve service that we're very excited about. Lots of readings. Our, our team is engaged in that. Lots of great music. I get to play keyboards on that. I love Christmas music. So we pray that you'll join us on Christmas Eve. Gather your friends around. Gather your families around. Do a watch party. And I hope that you can join me online this Christmas Eve. So as we wrap this up today, this is our benediction. Let's say this together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. We love you very much. Merry Christmas.